Hi there, today I want to show you how you can take advantage of the different surface types which you can create in Rhino. Alright, so let's quickly make those surface types. Plane, corner to corner, surface from four points, sweep one, rail and section, sweep two, rails and section, loft, Select curves in order, one, two, three. Press OK. Revolve requires me to go to the 3D view. So RV is my alias. So click once in the center, hold control, click, and then go up and you can see in faint yellow that that's constrained to the Z axis. That's the revolve. Planar surf, so PS. Now do note that this is a trimmed surface as opposed to all of the others which are just surfaces. Finally the extrusion, so EC is my alias. Change the direction by pressing D, click and then click and there we go. Now I'm going to select all the surfaces, SS, properties, turn on ISO curve, turn up the density, go to the top view and there you have it. There are all the different surface types, which can be edited with control points. So let's say you wanted to make a path, and there are varying conditions for those paths. Let's say you have a flat path, we can just select the boundary curve and go planar surf, and we have a trim surface. So if I turn on the ISA curve, you can see that it is cut from an original rectangle. So if I go untrim all, you'll see that is the original rectangle and it's just cut it from that. If I wanted to do a path on a surface, I can't do planar surf because it's not flat. The curve is not flat. So what I, but what I can do is take that curve, extrude it down, take the original topography and do the split command and then select that um, extrusion, press OK. If I deselect the excess, you can see that's the path that we have. But I can't really extract like boards. If this was a boardwalk, I can't really extract that from it. And also, you see that the path is on a slope. So that's that has limited benefit. However, if I use a sweep one command, I have control over many things. Firstly, I'm going to rebuild the curve. And I've got it at 55. And set the degree to 2 or 3. That means that we get rid of any knots or kinks. And I can just press OK. So it's a smooth curve. Well, let's do the sweep one command. Select the rail, select the section, which is just a two point curve. Press OK. And I'm gonna go, do not change cross sections. Press OK. And now if I select that surface and go show surface isocurve, we can see what the surface is actually doing. The U, the U and V of the surface follows the curve instead of it being cut out like we saw earlier. Now. This is great. We can see this might be considered as planks. And if I rebuilt this again, I could rebuild it to 100. And you say, oh, that looks closer to like the boards on a, on a boardwalk. So how do we make the surface flat? Because you obviously can't really walk on that. So let's say you wanted to take this path and you wanted to make it so that you could walk on it. Because at the moment, you can't really walk when it's sloping like that. How do you do that cleanly? The way in which I can think this might work is that you take each one of these cross sections, you make them all flat, and then you use them to create a new loft. So I'm going to take that surface, I'm going to isolate it, I'm going to do the command extract wireframe, and I'm going to select all of the curves. I'm going to deselect everything that's in the perimeter because we only want the cross section curves. Deselect that, deselect the middle one as well and the perimeter ones. Now those are the, the mid sections which I can use in a new loft. So go to Grasshopper, and I've got this tiny little script. It's simply a geometry container, set multiple geometries. Each one of these curves has been grafted. So with these curves, we take the curve middle and we use that to go into the plane input of the scale non-uniform component. The curves go into the geometry component and we set the scale for the Z axis to be zero. Those new flat curves are being put into the loft component and you get a surface which looks like this. 
you can see that it's perfectly flat now. And there we have our walkable surface. If I turn the surface isocurves to make them visible like this, I can actually turn on the control points and because it's a pure surface, I can adjust each one of these points individually like that. Let's say you wanted to make one of these surfaces into a pattern. In Grasshopper, there's a plugin called Lunchbox and basically with the panels suite of components, you can take any surface and turn them into panels. The U and V of each of these surfaces directly determines how these panels are created. So let's take the rectangular one for instance, right click, set one geometry, and you can see that these diamond panels are created according to the U and the V. Let's take this sweep, right click, set one geometry, and you can see how the diamonds follow the sweep around the curve. Let's do it with a revolve. Right click, set one geometry, and now you can see you get a radiating pattern. These can be super useful to, for adding textures to your surfaces. During the last semester, uh, for a landscape subject, I needed to create a complex surface over a large site. I drew what you can see in gray at one to 2,500, and then for the more accurate sections that you see in blue, I drew them at one to 1,250, so that's more zoomed in. If you wanted to have it more accurate, you could do 16 sections instead of the eight that I've done. The more sections you have, the more accurate your representation will be. So in Rhino, I traced those sections at the true, like at the true scale when it's all blown up over a picture. And what you can see here are the yellow curves, which were the original curves, just traced in top mode and then rotated 90 degrees using the guides so that they're all facing vertically. And then I rebuilt all of the curves like this, and they all have an even amount of control points so that when we do the loft, you'll get a very even loft, which can be manipulated afterwards. So with these rebuilt curves, each having the same amount of control points, I can now create a loft. Let's select the lofts in order. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There was an extra one created. Press OK. I'm going to take that surface and I'm going to rebuild it. Rebuild it um, so that what happens is, if I turn on the ISO curves, you can see that I roughly get squares. That means that, you know, when I do further manipulation by pressing F10, I can now see all of the control points. I will get a sort of an even um, manipulation of that of that surface. So I can move that up. I can select more control points just around and then do the smooth command, you know, down to something like that. And you get some sort of adjustment in the 3D realm. So this method where you draw the sections and that creates a 3D surface is really useful because then you can take this 3D surface and contour it into your master plan. And when I contoured it, I was able to get something along the lines of this. So all of this started out as a scale drawing using mechanical pencil. So I hope you enjoyed this video. The key points that I wanted to convey are how you make a surface determines its U and V structure. The way that this U and V is structured within the surface, how it can be edited, the type of patterns that it will give if you use Grasshopper, and where the control points will be. We also learned how you can take drawn sections and use them using the loft command to create a 3D surface. And I also showed you how you can take the wireframe of an existing surface, flatten the sections and create a new loft so that you have a path which follows the slope of a hill. If you enjoyed this video, please consider sharing it with your friends, giving it a thumbs up and commenting below. Thanks. See ya.